Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, full night of entertainment, starting now with the ramble and me, Alex Bennett, and going till midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to uh, where is it, Nevada? Pahrump? Uh, is it uh, Fallon? Is Fallon. It no, Pahrump's about Sparks, Nevada. Uh, Pahrump's about four hours south. Yeah, you're you're. How far are you from Reno? You're in uh, sixty miles. And what's the town you're in again? Fallon. Fallon, of course. It's I, where the. Um, it's uh, where Jimmy's from. Naval it's where Station. Jimmy's from. Yeah, yeah. There's big pictures of him all over town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They keep trying to get him to show up, but so far, no luck. I'd much rather live in Kimmel. Yeah, it's a smaller community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They anyway. have restaurants. How you doing there, Barnum? Um, you know, I... Hey, he, 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 by the way, just so you know, uh, the reason he's looking so happy is his mother just died. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, in the middle of this call, you and I, the mortuary called. The mortuary called? Yeah, to find out about how many death certificates I need. How, oh, you mean you, they make them up? Is it like uh, death certificates or us? I guess. I, I, it's a combination mortuary and pet cemetery. I, Is it a pet cemetery, really? <laughs> I'd like to say no, but the answer is yes. Well, just make sure they get it right. Yeah, maybe. You know. I don't know. Well, I'm, what, what, I mean, like, when, they, when week, they ask you, what basically. would you like? What, what would you like to say on your bowl? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's bad enough finding your mother dead. It, there's nothing quite you found. Bad your, you like, found your mother dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember when my mother was in the old, My mother was a hundred, and she was in the old folks' home. Right. And I think if I found her dead, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between that and when she was alive. Yeah. It, it's just, I got that. And then my stepdad has been in and out of intensive care units all over Reno in the last Well, let's explain this because weeks. this is really, uh, this is almost something out of, not, not a Springer show. I'm trying to think. But it, it's, it's weird. Uh, you're... Tell him your your stepdad. Your stepfather is a guy you went to school with. It is true. In other words, he's the same age you are. He's a little older than me, but not much. Yeah, and you're what? You're sixty-five, and he's like sixty-seven. And she was eighty-four. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that must have, that must have been weird. Hey, I knew you know. I I I knew I've known my my stepdad for fifty years, so you know, it's not that weird anymore. It just sounds I like I like to you know like when you're in the uh, like when the mortician shows up at the house. But now he had like a what? He had, he had a stroke. He had yeah he had two strokes. Two strokes. Two. You know, three strokes and you're out. No kidding, and I'm doing everything I can to keep him alive at this point because, I, you know, it's kind of my job. And yeah. people are probably say people are probably sitting out there going, "Alex, this man's mother just died, and you're treating it like it's a joke." Well, this is Chuck Farnham, ladies and gentlemen. I'm yeah, talking what am I going to say? This is a guy that if you said uh, uh, thoughts and prayers, he'd punch you. Oh, I was very clear about that when I announced <laughs> the wedding. I am not interested in the thoughts and prayers. If you know me, call me on the freaking phone. Send me a text saying, hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm sorry about your mom. I knew your mom. Whatever. But none of this thoughts and prayers crap. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. No, it's... So, you know. 
Yeah, I I think that uh, uh, you know well to begin with I, when I had my father die and I've talked about this before, you know all the things people come up and say to you they're all the same, you know it's always thoughts <coughs> and prayers I'm sorry for your loss, you know uh, I just wanted one person to come up and say I didn't like her anyway, you know. That would have been my um, sister-in-law. Your what? I I called my brother mm -hmm. and he, for some reason he doesn't speak to us i can't tell you why because i don't know anyways have, I, you ever I had, have you ever had bad words with him or anything no no nothing at all nothing and all nothing. of a sudden he doesn't like you I, maybe i might, don't even know that is he newly married did you say he married a few years to this woman i think maybe 10 well you see that's probably wife stuff she probably doesn't like you. Uh, and yeah. so he says, she goes, if you talk to him ever again, I'm never, I'm getting a divorce. Or, you know, it's stuff like that. Right. Well, she launched in, I get her on the phone, kind of, what do you want? And I go, well, you may want to, your mother-in-law passed away, and so did your husband's mother. She spent 25 minutes on the phone telling me what a horrible person she was. Your mother. Yeah, and I'm like, hey, I'm let's, trying let's, to... say, let's say your mother was the worst person in the world. Right. Dare, dare I say, cunt? Okay, right. Let's sure. say she Whatever. was. You know, now she's dead. You're talking to the person who is her son. You don't come out with a right. litany of what you didn't like about her. She's dead. You know, while she's right. alive, and, maybe and, you can say and, it because you want to make a point. You know. And, and by the way. If she wouldn't have been around, you wouldn't be married to the guy you were married to. Yeah. Her, her husband. And I'm like, I'm trying to remain calm, and I'm trying to not do the, you know, Jane, you ignorant slut, the phone to her, because I think this is an important, deep situation, and yeah. I kind of want to talk to my brother. And I never talked to him. Never got him on the phone. Nothing. I got nothing. I got her for 30 minutes telling me that my mom didn't come to her wedding and blah, 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 and she's a horrible person for it. And I'm like, A, she's not a horrible person. B, I didn't come to your wedding either. Do I suck? You didn't come to my wedding, either of them. Yeah. What the hell, you? Uh, well, yeah, I think you used the proper term. It, you know, I, I don't know why that happened. And neither is anybody in my family. My family all goes, have you talked to your brother? And I go, mm, yeah. We need to re rerun that again. It's horrible. It's hor it and I don't know why. I have no idea. Hmm. I got some really dark ideas, though. That I'm going to... Well, I think we talked about them the other day on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not... Uh, and I, and I feel, feels pretty good to me. I'm saying, I'm thinking, just thinking, just a side thought before we get go any further. We sure. get back to your mother in a moment. After all, she has all the time in the world now. Uh, she's very quiet. She's very quiet. You've got to get that tooth fixed, and I'm telling you why. Really? Because know. if you fix it, you can get some work as Santa Claus this year. Maybe I can get Santa Claus in like a weird, uh, bizarre ethnic neighborhood. Maybe something. A lot like of homeless. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do these really fast now, by the way. Really? Yeah, yeah I, I saw I, an I, ad. I, I, I got that. Each minute, I'm driving along, and I saw an ad that said they could do it in 24 hours. Uh, that I don't believe. Yeah. So what happens is they put in, what I, what they did with me, is if, and they didn't do this years ago. They pull the tooth, and after right after they pull the tooth, they put the implant in. Really? Yeah. Then they yeah, let that's it, not how anybody described it to me. Then they let it sit there. This is the you know the thing it anchors to. The tooth would hang anchor to. Right. And they let it sit there for two months, and then they put get you the f final tooth. It hmm. used to take six months. Pull the tooth, let that heal. Three months. Another. Then then they put in the implant. Another three months for it to settle. Now it's only two months. Boom, you're in, you're out, you know. Oh, so I don't have right. to deal with looking like I voted for Trump, you know. Yeah. 
Well, I get the, uh, you know, how'd you, oh, I, you lost a tooth. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I know right where it is. It's in the bathroom in the cabinet. <laughs> like, they had come to pull, on. They had to pull it? It fell out. It fell out. Oh, okay. I, mean, I had a tooth I, fall I, out. Yeah, during COVID, it just fell out. Was it loose before that? It got really loose during COVID, and then it just dropped out. Yeah, I had one over here that was really loose, been loose. I called it my loose tooth. And my loose tooth Latrec. Uh, yeah. And and I uh, uh, I kept wiggling it for years, and all of a sudden one day I'm eating I don't know something, and my tooth I thought it was my crown because there was a crown on the right. tooth, and I thought it was the crown, and I took it into my dentist, and I said my crown fell out, and he looked at it and he says, No, that's your tooth. It's self extracted. That's what they call it. Really? Yeah. And and they said, but that's good because now we'll put in the we'll put in the implant, and you you only have to wait three months before we put in the final tooth. But, yeah, but now the, it's the, down to two. Didn't this thing? Hmm? Didn't this thing cost you like three grand or something? I'm more like more like five after I'm through. Yeah, see, I'm not sure it's worth that. Well, uh, if it were all the way in the back, I'd say let it go. I yeah, think this tooth here is an implant yeah. and I had it done and uh, uh, if I never had it done nobody would ever see it right you know but here if I smile too much you can start seeing it see yeah so and, and me you, you can see it every time I'm in your mouth. case uh, you know you're gonna scare little kids at Christmas time I look like a beaver that has lost a tooth yeah but, you know, you know what they used to have? And this bothers me because they don't do them anymore. When I first got my first implant, uh, my dentist, uh, she said, uh, you know, you've got to get a, a clipper put in there. Oh, uh, I have one of those. Yeah. Well, I, I so I used the clipper, and it was it's a false tooth, folks, that you just yeah. take it out of yeah, the a single thing, false and, tooth, and, and you put it right in there, and it stays in there, and you all day you don't feel it; it's just there, right? And I thought that was the best thing ever. I felt I could have gone forever with the clipper, you yeah. know. Uh, but no, and she did it because she said, you want to keep the teeth spaced just right. Well, that cost right. seven hundred and fifty bucks the clipper. Right, right. It was cheap. Well, seven fifty is cheap. What? No, no. I mean, the Clipper thing was two two hundred. My Clipper thing was like two hundred dollars. Okay, well, it's cheaper where you are. But it felt weird in my mouth. I mean, it just felt weird all day long. Well, the, did they send out to have it fit for you? Oh yeah, 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 twice. Yeah. Well, anyway, I I I enjoyed it. So there were times I I started to go to sleep and say, oh, I forgot to take out my Clipper. I mean, that's how. Wow. Well, yeah, I didn't. You could I, tell this thing. I couldn't eat with it either. So I asked my dentist, could you give me a clipper and let me use that for a while? And she said, we don't we do not do clippers anymore. So why? She said, people swallow them. Yeah. Or something. That's what they kept saying to me. It's something like that. And I went, I'll take the chance. No, we just don't do them. So. Yeah. That, they can't make enough money off of you. They can't. No. So uh, th that was my... You know, but I, I wish I had a clipper right now. It'd be nice to just put it in there. And the thing is, that I, I felt I could go forever with the clipper. But I can send you mine, but it's, you know, it's for the front too. It won't fit. <laughs> we can shave it down. Just get your file out and shave yeah, the people, thing down. And people shove who it. do things on the cheap. Yeah, like, I'll use your clipper. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I got, I have money, but I prefer to not spend it. Well, so you have a clipper. Why don't you use it? Because it feels weird in my mouth. Well, next time we do this, you should put it in your mouth and let's see how. Okay. You, you and know. you'll hear mine. I sound weird too. I think. Why? Because your dentalization changes. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Dentalization. That's a word. Yeah. No. When you talk, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 take it from me. Somebody, now we're learning something. Somebody new. who learned about talking, that if I were say, uh, change my upper or lower teeth. See, I need him. I could stand and have him straightened down here, but I never did, because my dentalization is based upon that bottom row of teeth feeling right. that way. Okay. Like lately, I've been, for some reason, I'm getting a little bit of spittle that comes out down here. This is old person yeah. stuff, folks. 
And I, I don't sound any different to you, do I? No. No. But, but if I, I put it in, but y'all I, sound different. I feel it. You know. But anyway, so and I could feel it too. It was weird. Yeah. So it changes. That changes the way you talk a little bit because you yeah, were used yeah, to does. pressing I, your tongue. Like you were used to pressing your tongue against the upper teeth for certain letters. And right. now there's no there's a space there. You, you kind of have to relearn how to dentalize it. So, there, yeah. folks, you learned uh, something interesting here about announcing. Yeah, dentalize, dentalize your new Scrabble word. It, hey, that's a good Scrabble word, isn't it? Yeah. Dental eyes. Yeah, and I think is it? No, it's two. Dentalize. It's two. It's one. I think it's one letter too long for Scrabble. <clears throat> Isn't it? Yeah. Can't you only do seven? Or, I don't know. Forget it. I give up. Maybe. No, you only have seven in front of you, so you could never make up dental eyes. That's it. Okay. Right. I don't know. Do you like Scrabble? Nah. No. I always, I always have. No, nice. I don't have time for board games. I, and I get really, like, if I play Risk, all of a sudden I become Hitler in about two minutes, and I start just killing people for no particular reason. Yeah. My favorite, so I, was, my favorite was Monopoly. Yeah, and I think it's re reason it's everybody's favorite is because you like wiping your friends out. Yeah, it teaches you good social skills. That's kind of what Risk does as well. See, I was having a little trouble there. Social skills. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Social skills. Yeah. Social <laughs> skills. <laughs> ah. Boy. What the hell? So let's get I don't back, know, man. Expect, get back to your dead mother. So now you, you how many Still dead. how many um, death uh, notices are you going to get or certificates? Apparently there are fifteen coming. Good, good. I don't know why, but no. You should have when they say, "We don't." Why do you want fifteen? You say, "I want to make sure she's dead." Yeah, I was like I said, I was going to get on the phone with the guy, and I was going to you know throw out a you know a few dark moments mm -hmm. for him. And Here, here's the interesting one, though, F for our audience. How much are they charging you? Oh, I don't know yet. And, uh, I, I literally don't know. Well, she's dead. What, right. are you cremate her? Yeah. Gonna Not be cremated yet, though, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah, so she's laying over there on a bed of ice or something. Oh, so what they're doing is they're, they're not going to do it till. Of course, they get the pet cemetery has to get their cash. I was when my father died. They took me into this room full of caskets, right? And they said the price of the funeral is the cost of the casket. In other words, if you bought the five seventy-five thousand dollar casket, it would last through the next uh, ice age. You know that one. Then the, that was the, that was the cost of the funeral, so I'm looking around. And finally, over in the corner, I see this uh, this wooden casket. Now, the yeah. re reason for the wooden caskets are they're for Jews. I was going to say that it is a Jewish thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not because we believe that wood is wonderful. We're just cheap. That's the reason why. No. All you anti-Semites out now. there can have a good laugh at that joke. Okay, yeah, anyway. Yeah, there might be a stereotype. A anyway, yeah. uh, and I saw this wooden casket, and I said, that's perfect for my father. I mean, it, it, the wood is yeah. the richness of what I think of him as a person. And, right. And it it's a orthodox um, uh, coffin in which there are no nails in the coffin. Oh, right, wooden right. Wooden pegs put them together. Is not be you're not supposed to be buried with any metal, like an Amish casket. Yeah, and I thought that was perfect. So I said, "How much?" And he said, four thousand dollars." I said, "Sold." You know, four thousand yeah. bucks even to bury my father. What do I do? What if I can't afford it? Potter's Field. What? Right. I don't know what they do. Here's a piece of trivia you don't know. In England, if you die. And you don't have a will, and your uh, estate is intestate, as they call it. Right. Which always sounded to me like something that went on with your testicles or something, you know. But intestate, um, you, um, your money, 
Where do you think your money goes? It's government. No? You're kind of close. The queen? The queen or king. Get your money. That doesn't sound right. Well, it's right. That's the law in England. So if you die in England, you're in test date, all the money goes to Charles. Mm -hmm. That's not good. That's not good. I mean, I've been having enough trouble with all this, and it's just like, I, I, you know, it's like you don't, you don't know what to do. Now I've got, I can't grieve because I have to take care of the stepdad. I have no time to grieve because I got to watch what the insurance company is doing to him. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This, Let's just take a moment now. See, this is a time when you have to deal with me more than anything else. And we've got about, uh, oh, I don't know, four minutes left here. Go ahead, grieve. She was a good time. She stood in line for tickets with me. She, you know, we went to Elvis together, not Costello. You know, she was goofy as a loon. She was up for even the last couple of weeks when I didn't know this was coming. We were out and I was, you know, trying to force her to eat sushi and we were having a good laugh about it. And she was a great person. She was not a, uh, you know. That's wonderful because I couldn't say that about my mother. Yeah, I've yet mother. to put a tombstone on my mother's grave. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about my mom in an urn, and you know what I got? I got one of those. Um, remember back in the day when you'd be driving down the road, and the road would be closed, and they had those paint pots that, that would, you know, they were lit with oil in the road, and you would go buy them. They kind of look like you know? bombs in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got one of those. And I was thinking about putting her in that. Here, well, here's the best deal. If you want to get a cheap, cheap urn, uh, uh, Costco sells them. Right. Amazon sells them too. And then when I called the mortuary to begin with about all this crap, mm -hmm. I said, "Are you guys having any Black Friday sales or anything?" <laughs> I thought it was a you know it got real quiet every like, day. Well, I that was a every day question. with us here at Bob's Mortuary is a Black Friday. Yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> and Amazon was having Black Friday earn sales. Really? Which is what I told them, yeah. But not, you know, not the mortuary. Oh no, not over at the pet cemetery. No, full price, whatever that is, whenever they tell me. I mean, they got her, so in theory, if you didn't pay what how, how much just How much were the earns at Amazon? Oh, man, you can get it for like 30 bucks. Really? Yeah, nice ones. Are they more expensive? Not as nice as that paint pot thing. But, I, don't, you know. I don't know if I'd put my mother in a you know $35 Amazon urn. This is oh, but what about the paint pot? The, that, that pot thing for the car? It's yeah. got like an eternal flame on the top. Wait a minute. What I'm thinking about, does it say Kirkland on the bottom of the urn? <laughs> I believe it does. Probably. <laughs> It's like, come on. I thought the old eternal flame, and you know, and I'm telling people about it, and they're all looking at me shaking their heads. Well, they, they, also like, sell, have... they also sell caskets at Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. She's got to And be if you don't believe to... me, folks, just go to your Amazon account, yeah. put in no, you caskets, can get there. and they will come up. But I got to take her to Wyoming to be buried. So I didn't want to have to put a casket in the car and drive over there. Why Wyoming? That's where my stepdad's from, and that's where we all kind of grew up. And I was born in Montana, so we're like right there on the border, all the family. And I think my stepdad's father has a big plot at the cemetery where everybody I know is, so, including my dad. He's there too. My, my great memory of Wyoming is I was driving across Wyoming. I got a ticket. Nice. There was a speed trap. And That's the cop Wyoming. stopped me and he said, well, he said, I have to apologize. This is a speed trap, but I got to give you a ticket. Yeah. And then it was how much? And I think the ticket came to $200 or something. And yeah, that's pretty average. He said, but you can well, mail it. You can mail Looking for in. people with outside, uh, outside plates. Yeah. Yeah. So. And in Montana, it used to be safe and prudent was the speed limit. 
Safe and prudent. Oh, that's good. That's good. They don't do that anymore. Yeah. You were going 100 miles an hour. Yeah, but there was nobody else around me. Yeah, no, it, the sign literally said safe and prudent. I think that's re- wise. Rather than turning yeah. it into fundraising for the local community, you know? Yeah. And then the cops have to go out and get their quota. Hey, look, I just looked. and We've run out of time. Wow. So did my mom about a week ago. Okay, so I'll say what I always say to you. Get lost. Thanks, buddy. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I t- <laughs> Hold on a second, everybody. Let me just see how I am. Oh, see, that's feedback. That's really nice, isn't it? Okay, there we go. I'm trying to not use my earphones anymore. I'm getting tired of earphones, you know. So I, uh, I, I turn that on. Here we go. There we go. Hi. Hi. Oh, boy. Hello there. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, well, I'm exhausted. I've been doing a lot of work today. A lot of work. Today was a big working day for me. Uh, probably more work than I've done on GabNet in years. You see, every time we, uh, we lose somebody, and then we gain somebody, there are a whole bunch of things I have to do. And, and uh, if I discuss them to you, with you, uh, it, it's so involved, it's ridiculous, okay? Let me say that uh, Jack Bishop will no longer be with GabNet. Uh, I come to find out last night from Alan, who called this show, that he got a text from... Uh, uh, from uh, Jack saying that he's not going to do a show anymore. Now, did I get a text? No, I didn't. I had never heard a word about it. And I, I think I at least was deserving of that, but I wasn't. So what the hell? And so we uh, are, uh, I guess, changing our, our schedule here. Uh, Jack is no longer going to be doing the intersection. And even if he decides tomorrow he wants to, that's it. I've, I've kind of had it, okay, because it's been a lot of work for me. Uh, there hasn't been a night that doesn't go by that it, uh, right after he's off the air, I don't get something like, I can't find my file, and I can't do this, and I can't do that. And it's just, it was more than I could take. After. And, and so when I heard this last night that he was not doing it, Number one, I was mad that he didn't call me. After all, we've been friends for, oh God, maybe 50 years, something like that. And the least he could have done was call me or tech, even text me or email me and say, I'm just not going to do my show anymore. I'm through doing it. Uh, and I would understand because Jack has not been well lately. And I, I would understand if he felt that it was just getting to be a little too much for him, okay? And I, uh, I, uh, I would understand. But I didn't get that. And um, uh, so I decided uh, uh, t- uh, today uh, to make a change. And what's been happening the last couple of nights, although it hasn't gone well because of certain technical problems, but we solved them all today, um, Amy... Uh, has been doing the show. Uh, I keep thinking Amy Fisher. I can't. Uh, Amy Manuel has been doing, just picked up and just started doing the show, kind of filling in for Jack and trying to uh, take care of uh, what Jack should be doing. And she took it on her own to do that. And it does a really, I think, bang up job of it. And the audience she has really likes her. And, uh, uh, I've come to appreciate her, uh, not only for her intelligence and for her technical skill, but just because she, she just the fact that she jumped in and helped like that really, really said something to me. So the last two nights she's been doing the show, albeit kind of ragged and the sound was off and things like that, so there were things to be solved. And today, after I asked her to take up Jack's show and do Wednesday's through Fridays, because I always felt that Jack never had to do Monday and Tuesday. He just wanted to do Monday and Tuesday. So that's how that came to be. 
Um, I asked her if she would do uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and she said she would love to, and she'd be happy to. And so we got together today technically, and it was like a dream because she just had this ability uh, at, at, uh, at uh, uh, knowing everything, how to do everything. And so we got her up and running with all the different things she had to do within, I'd say, 25 minutes. And uh, we got the audio problem solved because I got on her computer and lowered some of the levels. And uh, it, it just uh, was really fine. And uh, it, it was a pleasure because where with Jack, I'd have to explain everything five times. She knew everything immediately as soon as I told her. So... In fact, I have to add, she actually taught me something today. So, uh, you know, I thought I knew a lot about doing this, and I, there are a few aspects of it that I didn't know, okay? So after I was through with her, I suddenly decided I better start changing all the graphics on the website. So if you go over to gabnet.net, you'll now see there's a new graphic for Amy, for the intersection. I am actually going to probably change those graphics within the week because I'm not that happy with them. I just wanted something to be up there for the time being. And in fact, uh, let me show you uh, what one of those graphics looks like, okay? What, is that it? No, that's not it. There we go. Ladies nope, and gentlemen. No, that's not it. Excuse me. Excuse me. I had it all wrong. Oh, here we go. All right. There we go. Well, that's not it, but that is it. Okay, I'm looking for the right one. I, I, you know, I, I should have somebody come in and do this show for me too. But uh, that's the new graphic or the temporary gra gra graphic. But I had to, I had to change it on uh, the website. I had to change it on the uh, up, uh, the what do you call it? The uh, uh, on demand. I had to change it uh, over at uh, uh, Roku. I'd change a lot of places, and I'm sure I'll find places I haven't changed it yet. Uh, that graphic will change, though, and uh, it's actually supposed to be moving, but it isn't, so, <laughs> you know. But anyway, it, it, that's tonight, 1130. She'll be here, and I hope that you will all go over and give her a try. She's a very intelligent woman. She knows her politics. She knows uh, about uh, pop culture and so on, and she's a... Uh, She's okay. I really have to have to take my hat off to her. Okay, all righty. Okay, I'm glad you saw that. Okay, so that's what's happening as of tonight. Amy uh, Manuel is the host of the program, known as the Intersection. Okay, I think it's time to bring people on here. Let me see here. Uh, I'm not using earphones, if, if I, and the reason I got all that feedback is I didn't have it set right. Can you hear me, uh, everybody? Now, yeah. Okay, good. I can hear you, too. And uh, hello, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, you, you're fine, but just let's see your whole head. Who I know. Who's yeah. William Efron? I'm growing up who's, a little bit. Yeah. Who's William? Take him off, Alex. What? William? William Afton. Who's that? Afton, I have no idea, better, but let me, let, me, let me see here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm going to kill him. Put him in waiting room. Okay. I, 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 don't, I, I didn't, whatever it was, didn't get on. Yeah, nothing got on. Now, William Afton, if you really want to come on here, you might go over to the, uh, where is it? Uh, Oh, over, well, where do we have our uh, chat room these days? I can't even remember anymore. That's how terrible I am at this. Oh, where, where, where's, our, uh, where's our chat room? Oh, I know where the chat room is. Okay. YouTube. Yeah, Afton, go over to the chat room and just let me know who you are. And if you do, if you do that, I will, uh, I, I will let you on. You know, yeah, we're a little... Put, your, what? Put, the, put us on. YouTube. Oh, okay. I'm all out. See, I'm all out of it today because I, I just did all this. Uh... <clears throat> well, luckily, if that guy had been bad, it wouldn't have gone out. But I noticed you hid your eyes, Ryan. Hmm. 
Trust me, the stuff I've already seen on the show, I can't get out of my memory. Y- yeah, you, it's it burned into your into your <clears throat> conscience. It's got to be the worst stuff I've ever seen in my life. You, really? Yeah, what do you thought? Yes, of course. You've never seen scat video? Although, you know, I pretty much turn it off whenever I see it, too. You know, I don't yeah, even like or... to see myself taking a dump, okay? So forget it, you know. Yeah. And I should be used to myself taking a dump. But anyway. Hello, uh, uh, Alan. How are you? I'm doing good. So did Jack ever contact you? No. No. Well, that's the way to be after about 50 years of knowing each other. You know? I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it really, it really disappointed me when I heard you say that last night. And then I found out you didn't even talk to him. You got a text. Right. I got a text to start with, and then I called him later on. Yeah. And he said, he said he's done. You and Amy can take care of it. And I said, I have no knowledge uh, or any way to take care of it. So. Why it is, why, why did he think that you and Amy could take care of it? I can understand him saying Amy because, you know. Right, so could I. But no, but why, up, why, never, why, why was he ready to drop the whole problem in your lap? I have no idea. Wow. Yeah, it's strange. It's mm. really strange. I crossed him off the Christmas list. Did you? Did you? Uh, well, I, you know, I think it not only let me down, it let you guys down who do participate in the show. You've been very loyal to him. Right. You know, and he, he, you were his big deal. Really, to be honest with you. And it's sad. It's kind of sad. Now, I realize Jack is not well, Yeah. okay, physically. And if he came to me and said, Alex, I just can't do this anymore because, you know, I just... just, stop whining. I'm not not feeling well. I would have gone fine. I understand that, you know. Uh, I thank you for lasting this long. And if you go and you ever want to come back, let me know. I'll find something for you. But I understand. But what is this just suddenly stopping and not even calling me and telling me? I don't know. You know, or writing me. You don't even have to talk to me. It surprised me last night that you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. But Amy did a pretty good job of it, you know. Of, of yep. but, And tonight it should be better. I gave her a place to go get music so she can have a theme song. And she learned how to operate all the various things that we do, and she understood them all because she had some of them. Right, you changed something on, I got a call from one of the other callers, and they tested it. She changed, uh, instead of logging on to GabNet on Skype, you log on to the intersection on, on Skype. What's this? On Skype, there's now a, on the left-hand side where you click on GabNet, Mm-hmm. You don't do that anymore. You click on the intersection. Oh, okay. Does she has a place for it on on Skype? I guess. She okay. Set it up. Yeah. Good. Good. That's fine. Yeah, because it's yeah. the only show here that uses the intersection. You know, and uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. How about Zoom? And I have, a, I, have a, a, I have a, you know, it's funny. I, if I don't do things like do my do certain things with my website or with. Uh, uh, you know, of uh, my um, um, premiere or Photoshop or whatever. And then I go to it after, say, six months, maybe a year since I really did a lot of this kind of work. You yeah. forget completely how to do it. Yeah. You know, it's like having to learn it all over again. Uh, so today I was, that's what part of the problem was not doing the graphics for this thing. But the graphics have changed already. We don't let grass grow under our feet, you know. No, no. And uh, I'm sorry that Jack, you know, after eight years has decided he doesn't want to do his show. I perfectly understand it. He Uh has not been well, and I, I, he has not been well enough that I can teach him stuff, you know. It's almost like, dare I say, uh, he's got a somewhat a case of dementia. And uh, it's just very difficult. And I know that. And if he feels that it's difficult and he can't do it anymore, I fully understand 
but let me know. Nice you know, give me the you. courtesy. I'm I'm very hurt by it. You know, yeah. and and I'm hurt by it for you guys too, because you've yeah. suffered through this with him. He wouldn't go on in some nights till 15 minutes late, and you were all trying to see if he was there. You know, that's yeah. how loyal you were to him. Yeah. So I feel sorry for you, but you all know and like Amy. Oh, yeah. So at least there will be a consistency of program now where you can enjoy yourself and maybe she can also gain an audience because she'll be on every night, right. you know? Uh, and I she, She's huh? looking at Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday after your show. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. We already established that, she and right. I today. Um, but everything should work just fine tonight. Uh, and uh, you, you can do that by just going to our audio feed and get, you'll get it, you get it there, uh, which you can listen to on gabnet.net, you know, if you want to. Up at the top, it, there's a link to uh, being able to listen to it. And uh, I, uh, I'm, so, I'm so happy she's doing it, you know, and that we'll have some consistency there. Plus, I can probably go to bed at about five after one. You yeah, because she posts those things so fast. Yeah, that you know that I can just take care of all the business and you know, calm down, not have the, were they, what? Were they on together before? They were in the very beginning. The one time, and I didn't think it was a particularly good combination. It didn't work very well. Uh, I, 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 although they had worked together for a long time, I didn't figure they feel they worked well together. And uh, she just kind of, I think, took the show, pulled the show over in a different direction that he didn't want to go with it, you know. So mm -hmm. anyway, so we got, it, well, it was always supposed to be Jack's show. I mean, the reason I brought it on was because Jack said, all right, could I do a show on GabNet? And I said, sure, yeah. fine. You know, we had some space available. And I said, come on board. And then he brought Amy with him, and I wasn't planning on that, you know. But over yeah. the years, she's become, you know, a bit more of a professional than she was. And boy, does she know her technical stuff. You yeah. know? So yeah, you won't be on the phone with her every five minutes like Jack. Well, mm -hmm. I, and I won't be getting, believe me, I won't have to deal with her after every show. Yeah. That's you right. know, I'm sure if she has a question, she'll call me the next morning and say, hey, right. how, how do, I forgot how to do this. How do we do that? You know, right. but I mean, it's not going to be the kind of thing like I can't find the file. Or uh, the big question that Jack asked her the other day was, what time do I go on tonight? Ask her. He keeps asking her three times in one night. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I'm worried about Jack. I'm really worried about him. You mm -hmm. know, uh, it, this is, I think even, even Jeff, from what he knows about sure. problems, it, it doesn't bode well, you know. Yeah. It's not easy for for him. It really. I know, and that's yeah. why I'm not being terribly hard on him. I wrote him a, a text today saying, you know, you could have at least told me and blah 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 and so on and so forth, but I don't want to hit him too hard, because you know, he doesn't respond to my text messages usually for about a week. Well, mm. you know, I, I I never knew how to get a hold of him exactly. Right. I could call him. That's the way I get him because he's usually there in his room with the computer. Hi, yeah. Pamela. Hi, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> so I got yeah. some uh, some dessert for everybody today. Oh, awesome! Uh, oh, this is Passover. What? Uh oh, this is Hanukkah. 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 Excuse me, Passover. <laughs> Hanukkah. Oh my God. Yeah, it's the first day of Hanukkah. What would you guys get me? <laughs> Those bourbon bowls? Uh, you know, we went over to the favorite place, Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Is that Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah. Wait a minute, they look too good to be Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, really. I know, they're really nice. They're getting fancier. Oh, they have better yeah, they can. Well, it's that still... can't possibly be a Hanukkah donuts. Yeah. Well... Why not? The whole idea is to have a a um, very sweet fried combo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. So uh, 
Pam actually made some. What'd you uh, say? Today. Pam actually made her oh. own little... Now, is Pam a stuff. good cook? Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. pretty good. Marjorie's she's a great... Marjorie's a, a great cook, but she has uh, decided not to anymore. I think mm -hmm. Pam's out of the, out of Jeff's screen, but she's holding a fry pan. That's why Jeff said, "Yeah, she's a good cook." <laughs> <laughs> you would have get you would have got hit in the head. What do you expect? Pan. I gotta say the words. She's yeah. kind of stinky. Come on. Yeah. I'm not that dumb. Yeah. So uh, uh, you know, uh, so that's what's happening around here, you know. Uh, but at least I think there'll be a show after us now, on a mm -hmm. fairly regular basis. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a great relief for me in many ways. But again, I worry about Jack and I worry about his health. And I, I just feel that the only thing that bothers me is that of, no matter how well he isn't, there's no excuse for not just telling me. You know, yep. there's no excuse yep. for doing that. Yeah. Uh, but. No, he was frustrated. Huh? I think he was frustrated. So he could have still called and, and said he's the same more. He was frustrated where he probably didn't didn't want to talk about it. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well anyway, so I'll be that, positive that's it. Bit. You know, and uh, I wish Amy all the good luck. And I told her, you know what I told her? I gave her a couple of pieces of professional advice. One of which was don't do Jack's show. Don't try and do Jack's show. Mm -hmm. Create your own show. Create your mm -hmm. own, you know, way of doing things. Yeah. Uh, and I said because it's it's it and and come up with things that he he hasn't done. I said be your own person. Uh, that's number one. And number two, and it's been the way I've always felt about the business forever. I said you're not doing the show for the callers, and you're not doing the show for you. You're doing yeah. the show for the audience who's listening. And they're the people who came to be entertained. So remember that always. And just do a show knowing there's an audience out there who's listening to you and trying to be as entertaining as you possibly can be. And I said, other than that, go have fun. You know. Yeah. Because you're never going to hear a word from me. I mean, that's the one thing. I put, Jack was on all those years. And I certainly had things I could say about his show and complaints about little things that were going wrong and things, this not technically, but just the way the show was being handled. And I never, ever said a word. And I will never say a word to anybody who does a show. If I ask them to do a show, I trust that they're going to be able to do one, you know? And so I let them find their own way. So Jack, Jack said few weeks ago, a few months ago, that he is trying to line something up so he can be a producer for another radio uh, company and make money doing it. And he, you know, uh, I won't mention names. Some of the people on the show say uh, he also wants to get a, a mini smart car as big as he is. And he can't walk. He and can't even so, leave his room. Right, right. And so people said, you know, about him getting back into the business again and producing is fantasy land. So, hey, listen, I, look at me. I'm 84, about to turn 84 years old. I know I'm never getting back into radio. Yeah, well, he thinks he is, I guess. Well, that's that's a delusion. Right. Okay. Need I, need I say more? You know, no. so... Anyway, anybody else want to call this show tonight? It's Thursday night. You know, this is our light night. Uh, I hung up probably on somebody who was the only other person, but who knows what he did. He wasn't coming in fast enough. Not at all. That's that one. Yeah. Yeah. That was all bad. And you know something? That it, and what was great is I forgot the Zoom was on and I just had myself on, so that would have been good if that happened. Yeah. But anyway, how you doing, Jeff? Good. Yeah. Been having a good day. We had uh, my son and, and his wife and uh, and uh, my ex-wife came over too. Your ex-wife came over? 
Yeah. That's well, nice. You still have a yeah. friendship with her? Yeah, a little bit. We get yeah. to, how does how does Pamela relate to her? Oh, she works. Pam is terrific with any per yeah. person. Yeah, oh, she's a terrific woman. She is woman. super at that. Yeah. And uh, everybody thinks she's terrific. Well, what she, made the ex-wife come over? You're not paying her alimony anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Um, no, just that uh, David was uh, coming over, and I said, why don't you bring your mother? You know. Yeah, why not? that's nice. That's very yeah, nice. Was, nice when yeah. you could do that, you know? Yeah. And then she she was talking to me about some of the uh, history with her brother and and her uncle and this and that. And I asked her a couple of questions about that. And I, you know, brought up a couple of jokes out of them. Do you, do you feel when you ha have her around that it's a little awkward? Well, yeah, it is. I mean, when she's with us, we all know her. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but she's a little bit of a, what can I say? She's a unique person. She's kind of her, by herself, you know? Yeah. And uh, so that's all right. When she's I still have contact with some of my ex-girlfriends. Yeah. You know? Uh my ex, well, Ronnie was my ex-wife, and she's dead. I don't know where my first ex-wife was, is, could be gone, could be dead, for all I know. Uh, who else? Um, let's see here. My third wife, I know where she is. I'm surprised she's still alive, to tell you the truth. You know, she has not been well over the years, but she's, you know, she's still here. So, you know, we talk so every now and then. Yeah. Pam and I have a good good friend and uh she was on the phone the other day talking to Pam and she wanted to get on the phone with me and she says, I, I wanna talk Jeff, I wanna tell him something that he doesn't know that I, I really have to tell him. So I get on the phone and I says, What's up? She goes, You're I'm pregnant. <laughs> well, she's fifty eight years old or something. Were, no, she's not pregnant. She's not afraid. And I said, but it wasn't me. <laughs> oh, boy. You know what I wanted to do? I got to tell you, my business manager, every year for about two or three years, I've wished him a happy birthday a month early by accident. <laughs> I don't know. It just came up that way in my calendar. And then last year, it happened two years ago. And so I said, well, next year I'm going to remember and the next year, I didn't change the calendar, and a happy birthday. He writes me back, it's not my birthday. I wrote him happy birthday this year. And uh, uh, he said, no, it's not my birthday yet. It's a month from now. So I, I moved it. So for him, from here on in, it's in my calendar as the day it's supposed to be. So on his birthday, I did what I usually do. I sent him an email with big, huge red letters that said, Happy birthday, you know. Yeah. And then I found out something, and I was it was a day too late that I found this out. But had I known it, I would have gotten him the presents, the present of presents. For a slim two hundred dollars. Have you heard of Cameo? Mm -hmm. Cameo is this organization where you can go over to Cameo and they have like all kinds of people, big stars and whatever so on. There's a price attached to all of them. And if you then pay the money, they will do a happy birthday greeting or anniversary greeting or whatever <laughs> the uh, event happens to be to this person. I think you can get one from Trump if you want to, you know. It's called Cameo. And it seems the person who's just joined Cameo is, what's his name? Uh, the currently no longer uh, congressman, George Santos. Oh, Santos. <laughs> Santos, for 200 bucks, will make a birthday greeting for somebody, and it would have been worth 200 bucks to just have a birthday greeting from George Santos sent to my business manager. But then again, as my business manager, he probably would have said, what a waste of money. <laughs> but I, I just want, I would have done it if I had known it. Uh, <laughs> George Santos so far has made over $100,000 doing this. 
And but he's he only been doing it for a few days. So it's it's pretty incredible. So, huh. so if you want to have George Santos send a greeting to somebody you care about, that's the perfect gift for Christmas. Or Hanukkah. So. Hmm. I'm in Lodi tonight. You're, I, yeah, I thought you were. It looked like you were you were you calling out for hookers or what, anything. You're in a hotel room, right? He just left. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, I uh, got a uh, present all hands meeting tonight, tonight, 1030, and then um, for night shift and then day shift and swing shift. I'm all with the VP. So. But you, you're doing a night shift? Uh, just the presentation, you know, for all hands, the quarterly all hands meeting. So I do that every quarter for the, for the mm-hmm. company. Oh boy. So, so yeah, so I just stay up here cause there's no way I'm driving home at 11 PM and then coming back in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So your wife then hired brings over hookers. Is that what happens when you're gone? <laughs> yeah. That's a nice motel six room. I've never seen one like that. No. It's almost, it's one grade up from Motel 6. Oh, really? Wow. Is this a place you just go get for the night, or is this a place the company has on a regular basis? <clears throat> no, no, I get I get it. But it's all through the company. Just Yeah, yeah but I why, why, does, why doesn't the company just find themselves a little uh, apartment or something that can be yeah. used by anybody who needs it? Yeah. Hmm. You know, I mean, that's what my wife set up for her company a couple of years ago, although they got rid of it because it wasn't being used enough. Mm-hmm. But they, they decided it was getting expensive to bring people in and put them up at hotels in New York City. But if they went out mm-hmm. and rented an apartment and furnished the apartment, mm-hmm. that would be cheaper. And it, w- it w- was all the way around, but just they didn't find enough people were using it, so they got rid of it, you know. Yeah, that, that's how this would be. This would be, you know, sometimes we have an event like us here for a week, a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Then there'd be a lot of people here, and then sometimes then there's nobody. So, Yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, is anybody else going to call tonight? So we, uh, we, uh, I, I don't know if we can get into a big political discussion with this group. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, but did you watch the debate the other night, last night? All I saw was the great moment with Chris Christie. He, yeah. And Ramaswamy. Mm. He said, "We've only been on twenty minutes, and what? It's you just you prove what a pain, what a jerk you are, or something like that." What did yeah. he say? Chris said that he, he had a couple things. Chris Christie, like they they were talking for like fifteen or twenty minutes before they even got the Chris Christie, because those the three of them kept arguing, and then there was. There's two time, two or three times when there was a question asked to DeSantis, and it was a yes or no answer. Oh, like, would you bring troops into Ukraine? You know, and 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 then he started talking about his military service and all this stuff. And then Chris Christie said, "See, this is just how like you are. There's a quick, there's a there's an easy answer. It's either yes or no. You won't bring in troops. And you go on for five or ten minutes about your service that you did." And you're not answering the question. That's the problem with these three people. They're not answering the question. And they said, good, the yeah. moderator said, well, would you? And he said, yes, I would bring him in right away and blah, blah. And then there was another, like, you know, 10 minutes later, there's another question that they give to DeSantos. I think it was DeSantos again. And he went around the question again. And then I and saw then him Chris do Christie yeah. called him out again on it and said, another time you don't answer the question. They ask you this or this and you go on for 10 minutes. Well, uh, 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 what do you call it? DeSantis was on with uh, Kirsten Welker on Meet the Press on Sunday, or a couple of Sundays mm. ago, and he did exactly that. And what mm. I told Marjorie as I was watching it, what he's doing, you see, you have to understand what he's doing by doing that is trying to play out the clock. Mm. Mm-hmm. In other mm-hmm. words, the more time he can take up doing that, the less time he has to spend answering questions. Yeah. And then I'm sure if the moderator jumps in, he doesn't pay attention to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then Chris Christie, you know, he brings up Trump a couple times, you know, saying we're sitting here and we're not talking about this and this and this, you know. So supposedly, I, from I, like, what I, what, I like watching him. From what the analysis was by some people, Christie actually won that debate last night. Really? 
Yeah, he's that good. I mean, the way he took Ramaswamy Bumi Bami, whatever his name is, Ramaswamy uh, to the to the cleaners by saying, "Hey, you know, you you've been on twenty minutes." And you've proved to the world what a jerk you are, or something like that. Yeah. Now, what he was saying that the first time he got on him was he said uh, by, by guy I can't pronounce his name, but um, he he says something off, you know, on all these interviews that he does. Then he comes on these debates and he says the opposite. And then when they ask him that, he says it's not true. And then he challenged him and said, you were just on all these interview shows between now and this last one, and you were saying this stuff. And now you come on this like you do all the time, and then you start saying you're on this side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris Christie is really, he's 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 taking that you know that side of I'm going to challenge everybody and not just go with the flow and, and challenge all these guys on what they're trying to do. You, well, you, so. you know what's so pathetic about all of that is that. Uh, uh, the, it's a debate between four people who haven't got a chance of getting the nomination. Right. <laughs> you know, Christie uh, keeps backing uh, Nikki Haley too. Who? Chris Christie keeps backing Nikki Haley. Backing Ram her? What? what? Ramaswamy's pissed at that. Well, no, I don't think he's backing her. He's running. You know, I mean, come on, you don't back one of the other people. But. You know, he uh, he certainly. What do you think of Nikki Haley? This is a big question. Because I, I, I got asked this by Lori. I think Thompson. she's the best qualified Republican. I said that. I said when when Lori asked me the question, what I think of Nikki Haley. I should have said if if she went, ran for president and won. I wouldn't be happy because she's a Republican who won. But I could live with her, you know. Uh, I I don't know that she'd be a particularly great president, but you know. Then well, again, who great. is? Yeah, Would governor. you say the same thing from uh, about Chris Christie? Uh, Chris Christie, you know something? I would be very happy if he became president at this point, compared to all the people who were available. Yes, he's very much a conservative, but I got to tell you. Uh, he has a certain sense of honesty about him. And I, I know people are going to find that crazy Dude. if you're living in New York as you go, what happened to that whole thing in New Jersey where, you know, where there, there, were, there were these problems that he had? And I, you know, he, when asked about that question in a debate once, said, I'll cop to it. I made a big mistake. I let other people run my, run, do their jobs and not question what they were doing, you know? Right. And so I take complete blame for that situation. Well, how can I fault somebody like that, you know? So so the guy, I don't know the guy's name, he, he was getting to Nikki Haley and, and then to Chris Christie because they didn't know the province that they were going to try to invade in, in uh, Ukraine. They didn't know the province's name. So he was on them about, you don't even know the province name and you want to have have people bring their kids there to fight in this war and so he kept you don't even know the province you don't even know the province well then finally um chris christie said yeah well while you're in harvard you know learning about the provinces in ukraine i was out here doing all this stuff and voting and blah blah, blah. yeah so chris chris christie got some good jabs in there mm. well chris christie i gotta tell you to begin with he 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 get, he can always teach you a lesson when he's talking Part of the reason is he was a prosecutor, and he yeah. knows how to get up there and give a speech to convince, as it were. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, 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 I've come to really like Chris Christie, and Marjorie hated Chris Christie. And I said to her mm -hmm. yesterday, I said, how do you feel about him these days? She says, oh, I love him. Yeah, wow. because uh -huh. he, he's the most honest of any of these people running. There's no, yeah. you know, there's no, he won't... He won't dodge any question, all right? So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, but I heard that the first, the, who's it? Lori was saying she hated the first debate they did mm -hmm. oh, because they just were yelling over each other. Oh, I know what she was complaining about. The thing between Gavin Newsom and oh. uh, 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 
uh, DeSantis. And she said, there was nothing but yelling back and forth. And I said, well, the reason was it was the fault of the network, which was Fox. It was the fault of the host, which was Hannity. Mm -hmm. um, what the problem was, was that in debates like that, you tell all the people debating, listen, if you're not on, neither is your microphone. And you keep turning everybody's mic off who isn't talking. Then that doesn't go on. Uh, even if they think maybe they're talking over somebody, they're not because nobody can hear them. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. And that's what they should do in all debates. Whoever's got the, this mic has the mic and everybody else has theirs turned off. Yeah. So, you know. But you don't go into this thing where they're just yelling back and forth at one another. M Lori said after seven minutes she had to turn it off. It was so annoying, you know. Yeah, and I, I actually wanted to watch that to see. I don't know. I, I'm just curious to see what happens when everybody left. <laughs> what is it? Everybody's <laughs> leaving. I'm just curious to see what happens because... You know, Newsom admitted that because we're having guests over, we had to clean the house, you know, so all the homeless went somewhere. We don't even know where they went. But, you know, I'm curious to see how these next, you know, weeks go now that everybody's back gone. I'm curious mm -hmm. to see where we're, are these homeless going to be coming back? And they said they're going to be stronger on stuff and all this stuff. What are you, what are you just... doing? Smelling your chair? Ah, God, you got some kind of weird odor in the house. I'm sorry. Stop farting. <laughs> You know. farted so bad, Jeff smelt it. He left too. Oh yeah, well that That's must right. be. I'm it. leaving. That, no, <laughs> not, I'm trying to figure out where this damn. No, the two of you left completely. It was just Brian and I left here to oh, talk I, to each other. Jeff left too. Yes. 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 Oh, good timing, Jeff. Thanks. Yeah. No. So, right. oh, you know what? I do have something to talk about. So, so this is very interesting, Alex. So, I I listened to the. I listen to one of these shows in the series in the in the morning, sometimes on my way to uh, Lodi. So it was an old one from, from August, and they were talking about, there was someone who started the Comedy Cellar in New York or blah, blah, yeah. whatever his dad did. Now he took it over and stuff. But they, in August, they were trying this thing where they were, they were, uh, they were filming it at the Comedy Cellar, and then they were going to be live streaming into movie theaters, a comedy show. Huh. And I was like, you're not at a table drinking, you know, and you're in a movie theater. Re Regal, the Regal movie theaters. So I guess they tried this in August, and I guess it didn't, didn't go well because they I haven't heard about it, but really bizarre. Well, you know, I... Uh... To begin with, the what's the reason for it? You know? Yeah, they they this yeah, they, they to begin with you've got enough comedy like... you got enough stand up comedy on every network. And the reason they do it is because it's the cheapest kind of entertainment they can do on these channels, you know. You get a theater, you set up some cameras, you shoot it, and that's it. Nobody gets hurt. But nevertheless, there's so much of that. Why should they go out to a theater? To yeah, go see so they what... they were they were live streaming into like twenty regal movie theaters, and and then I don't know what happened. That but it was it, this this recording was from August, so it was like really bizarre. So I don't think that would work at all because you have the whole atmosphere of a nightclub to go see comedy, you know. No, what you do is if you really feel serious about that, you create a pr show called Tonight at the Comedy Cellar. And then mm -hmm. you sell it to somebody like Netflix, or you sell it to mm -hmm. Amazon, or you sell it to Disney Plus, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Disney Plus, this is interesting. Do you have Disney Plus at home at all for the kids and no. stuff? No, I do. I have it for the kids here. Uh, <laughs> I got it for Adrian, but she never comes over, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, so uh, uh, they you know, are owned by Disney. And Disney owns Hulu. And they just bought the other third of Hulu. They sent a check for, I think, $28 billion or something to uh, Comcast. And now they own the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, 
so tonight they I see a thing and they say, oh, go over, oh, yeah, they sent me a thing, go over to Disney Plus, which now also has Hulu. Well, I already have Hulu because I have the Hulu Plus where I get the Disney Channel and ESPN Plus on top of getting Hulu. But now I can go onto the Disney Channel and get a lot of Hulu programming. Wow. It is so cluttered, both these channels now. I go over to Hulu, I can't find anything. I can't even find the stuff. I only can find the stuff that's live, and many times I can't even find that. You know, the stuff I'm paying the extra, you know, $200 a month for, you know? So uh, it's really, it, 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 what's going to happen in the future with all these, you know, streaming services is they say that, like, uh, Paramount Plus is going to combine with Apple TV, you know, but they're all going to get so cluttered because they're climbing on top of each other. Mm. And uh, you go over to uh, Max, who's been bought up by Discovery, which was HBO Max, and now it's Max, and it's so cluttered with, I mean, of <coughs> course you got... These wonderful HBO programs like the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, what's that show? The fancy show with the, uh, uh, the uh, something years. I'm trying to remember now. Uh, wonder years? Huh? <laughs> wonder years? No. no, not the wonder years. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. I'm, I'm just, I'm in such bad shape tonight because I just did too much work today. But anyway... They have things like that. They have, you know, the House of Dragons, and they have uh, mm -hmm. uh, this thing and that thing, and they have the, uh, 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 what do you call it, The Last of Us. A lot of great shows that HBO has. And then they've got Guy Fieri and his kitchen food-eating hot stuff programs. And you're going, how, did this, how does this all work together, you know? Like, I don't want all that. I don't want all that discovery shit. If I wanted that discovery shit, I would have subscribed to Discovery. Right. But all of a sudden, I'm getting all this discovery program, none of which I watch, mind you. You know, mm -hmm. totally resistant to it. Mainly because, you know, Guy Fieri, come on, you know. And you that's on the same channel that has House of Dragons? That doesn't make much sense, does it? <laughs> and now over at Hulu... <laughs> They've got the every channel going, you know. I, I can't scary. tell where my live stuff is and isn't. Very badly put together, all of these channels. And what they're going to do is blow everybody out of the water, and everybody's just going to give up. Hmm. You know? You're talking about the chef. You call him Guy Fieri. I think it's Guy Fieri. Guy what? Fieri. <laughs> I don't care what it is. It's Guy. Oh, okay, I just want to make sure I'm it, on the same page. It's You're Guy bores me. Guy bores me. That's oh, his yeah, name. Yeah. His blonde hair and all the all the weird hair styles. Yeah. I'm yeah. jealous. He's got a full head of hair and I don't. So. Yeah. Let's see how many hot peppers we can eat in 13 weeks. You know. I mean, this is just ridiculous. You know. I don't know if I'm going to watch a uh, if I'm going to watch a. a show like that or a show that's a you know a, a reality show right. give me the one i love the most now can yeah. you guess what it is no i guess you can't no. below deck mediterranean oh yeah, 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 yeah you like it yeah shecky used to like it too shecky and i that was our that was our uh guilty pleasure the when they go out, when they go out on the town is the best. <laughs> oh, yeah, and they get drunk. Yeah, that's great. They get drunk and hook but up with what, each what's other. What's great and... about that series is it's part travelogue mm -hmm. and it's part reality show with people all on this boat screwing each other, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then getting in trouble for it and then getting into fights and some of them leave. I had one just leave. Natalia just left. Yeah. Because she couldn't yeah. take it anymore. So but you get the three. They got. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just said they got the three, right? They have the they have the Mediterranean. They have the Mediterranean. They have the guy, 
the one guy who who does the one. Well, they adventures. have Mediterranean, and then they have like Australia, I think, or something. They have a whole yeah, bunch Australia, of Australia and but, adventures, and they, they also have a sailboat guy. The low deck so, Mad Mediterranean is the best because they none of them have yeah. Captain Sandy. Right, right, right. Yeah, mm, yeah. you know. Yeah. But uh, it, 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 but here's the thing. I love that show. I love that show, and uh, uh, it's my guilty pleasure. Uh, yeah. And I, I love to watch it, and I'm not going to say that I don't. Okay, try and stop me. No, I, I love that show too. But, but I still watch. I still watch Survivor. I like Survivor still. I like Amazing Race. Amazing Race, I thought was again. It was kind of like below deck Mediterranean. Okay, mm -hmm. in that it's part game show, part travelogue. Yeah, you can't beat that. That's a great combination. You know? Yeah, they just they just did. They were in Vietnam, and then they just they just were in uh, Sweden, and they're actually in the same city that we have a we have a manufacturing plant that I've been to a few times. So when they were going down the subway, I've been down there. So yeah, so it's pretty cool when you've been there and sort of see what's well, going on. Well, uh, in uh, on the below deck Mediterranean this year, they just went a little bit by where we tr had a vacation uh, mm. a year a couple of years ago in Italy. And you know, it, it, but it's just it's just great all the beautiful. way around. You know, I love that show. Yeah, yeah really. My beautiful other areas. show I watch, the only other one that I watch. Oh God, can I admit? Is it is it bad for me to admit that I have seen almost every episode of Pawn Stars? Mm. You know what it no. is? It's kind of like uh, I always liked uh, that British show that became an American show, Antiques Roadshow. Mm -hmm. And this is the Rednecks version of Antique Roadshow. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's, uh, I, lo I love that show too. But those are the only ones that I really yeah. go for. But sometimes I, I watched a couple episodes like this last week of the new, you know, the, not newer stuff, but this most recent stuff. And they act. The only thing I don't like is when they bring something in, yeah. then they act like they know everything about it, which I know they don't. I know then they start doing research and then they, they film it. Oh, yeah. They, they sit there and they say, well, you know, of course, this was in a time when such and such and this looks like. Th and I, you just know they have s experts who sit there feeding them this information like and they act like they know it all. Exactly. Yeah. The other part about it is, is that they act like they know it all. But the other the other problem I was thinking of is, oh, yeah, they bring in, half the time they bring in an expert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, because, well, I don't know how much this is worth or not worth. Let me bring, let me call an expert in. And they do this about three times a show. Now, how do we know when they bring in the expert, they aren't a shill for the pawn store, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. A, a shill for the pawn store who comes in and lowballs the price so they can get an even lower price on it. Would you trust any of those people coming in? No. But they'll bring something in and they said, oh, I want $5,000 for it. They said, let me bring in the expert. They bring in the expert and they say, oh, that's worth 10000 And then the guy leaves and then they say, okay, so how much did you want? And he goes, well, I want 10000 now because your expert said 10000 And then they'll say, oh, you ain't getting that. You know, oh, means, no, they'll always low, you yeah, they'll always lowball you. So I want to know why are you bringing your shit to them in the first place? Right. Yeah. You know, because I like I have a couple of things I'd take into them and I know what they're worth. And I know that if I even if an expert looked at them, they said it's worth twenty five thousand dollars. They try and lowball me down to 15. Well, I can go somewhere and probably get the one what I want. I could get what I want by just going on eBay. You know, so I'm, in fact, I could probably get more than I want at eBay because those people are idiots. You know that, and then also, and they said that they've had some. So they they also have the storage wars when they had the storage wars, and they actually said that they had juiced some of those some of those uh, containers. You know, the storage things mm -hmm. that they actually planted some stuff in there before. Oh. Yeah. yeah but, I, always, I always Google to see if it's fake. Well, you know what happens? England, they're very honest. Here in the United States, they go like, uh, Emmy, best reality show for the Emmys. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what they call them in England at the, at their, at their, at the BAFTA TV awards? Mm -hmm. 
They call them scripted reality. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, they don't want to say, hey, this is reality, because it really isn't. In fact, can I say this, that if you, let's say you do a reality show, and I want to do a reality show about Jeff. Well, Jeff's going to be different with a camera in his nose, up, you know, up his butt and taking every angle of him. When he knows he's on camera, he's not going to be the same person he would be off of, off camera. That's why, you know, uh, uh, below deck Mediterranean. I, you don't believe any of that. They know they're being filmed, so they are acting up. They're, they're. What kind of scenario can we cause now, you know? Mm, the drama. Yeah. It's like anybody who thought the Kardashians was real life are out of your minds. But the one thing that they don't show you on Below Deck Mediterranean, here it is, folks. A little something you should know. I learned this from Shecky when he was still alive. They, you know, there are three decks on that boat. You only see two. Do you know what's in the bottom deck? No. Well, to begin with, they have the engineers and so on engineers, who run the boat, right. you know, who take care of the engine and so on. It's also a complete television setup down there. Oh, and right. And that's where they do all the shooting and all the editing and all that. It all is done on the third level. But you never see the third level on that show. Yeah. So what kind of a reality show is that? Yeah. Yeah, even... Wait. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. Jeff? Yeah, unmute. Unmute. Jeff? Jeff, unmute. Oh, Jeff, you're muted. You're muted. <clears throat> unmute yourself. We'll get him awesome. in a second here. Yeah. yeah. Um, we went on a vacation and uh, with another uh, couple. Mm-hmm. And um, we got in and we find out that all the people who were running this thing were British. And they all wanted to set up this movie about how nice it is to go on this trip. And so they picked us up and they talked to us a little bit. They gave us, they had three or four people working there to make sure the videos are good and Mm -hmm. audios are good and and that we're picking the right locations and all of that. And we go through this thing and and I think we, you know, spent, you know, maybe two hours on the, on the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> and then after we're done, they try to get some other people to come and doing the same thing, except a different location. Because we're, we're on a small um, river mm-hmm. boat. So yeah. it's moving around and, and there's different properties that you can see and things like that. So I, you know, these things are well organized, and uh, they told us that that they pretty much put them on on British TV every week. Mm-hmm. All of that—that's a big business for them. Yeah, to get yeah. people to go on vacations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I, I'm going to start the theme here. Maybe you can hear it back of me because I have the speaker on. Can't hear it? Oh. Anyway, maybe, maybe Zoom even blocks it out if it's coming as ambient noise in the room. Hey, that's it for us. We got to go. Hey, thank you, uh, Alan. Good to have you here. Alex, very good to have you here. Uh, uh, Jeff, thank you for being here. Brian, nice of you to join us this evening from your lovely hotel room. Uh, Nothing else to do. Well, call a hooker. Anyway, <laughs> everybody, give yourself a big wave, uh, wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye at you, and uh, we go away. There we go. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. By the way, you do know that we have uh, Amy Manuel, who will be doing a show right here uh, next over most of this same gab net. You can call her on Skype at... Yes, GabNet Live. That's the uh, that's the uh, Skype uh, address. Uh, I'll see you again. Let me go back to me. I'll see you again uh, tomorrow night. Uh, it's uh, same time, you know, same station. And uh, stay uh, stay tuned now for Amy. Uh, and uh, as usual, 
uh, I think the world of all of you. And uh, I want to say, I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, yeah. You know what I told you to do. Tell her I love her, okay? All right. Nobody ever does, but tell her I love her.